Here's something you probably didn't know. Ancient forms of meditation allowed the human body to gain amazing abilities, to carry out physical miracles through qi energy control and feedback. Sounds far-fetched, doesn't it? Almost superhuman? In some ways, it very much is a superpower. And just like Superman using the sun's energy, humans can tap into the energy of the universe as well. Because the truth is, your body is already tapped into limitless energy. You just need to know how to make it work for you. Sadly, over the centuries, these secrets have been lost to humanity. Practiced today by only a secluded few in remote locations around the world. Imagine if you could regulate your body's core functions and use them to your advantage for everyday healing, well-being, and abundance. You can. The science is in. Deeper levels of human consciousness are intricately connected to the order of the natural world. By looking inside, you can shape the outside. Some call this the physics of spirituality. In the next few minutes, we'll explore examples of real-life human superpowers and the science behind them. You'll learn how to harness this untapped qi energy for yourself with cutting-edge new technology so you can start activating your own powers for a better you. In the 1960s and 70s, Herbert Benson, associate professor of medicine at the Harvard Medical School, found himself fascinated with Buddhist monks and the deep levels of meditation they practiced. He believed studying advanced forms of meditation could uncover capacities that will help us to better treat illnesses. As luck would have it, in 1979, the Dalai Lama visited Harvard University, and Benson made an unusual request. His Holiness agreed to help. In the early 1980s, Benson visited secluded monasteries in the Himalayan mountains of northern India, where Tibetan monks living in exile practiced traditional tumo, a form of deep meditation. In this practice, monks harness the psychophysical qi energy that courses through the arterial system, the spinal column, and the nervous system, and consciously accumulated to use for specific purposes. Tammo is a Tibetan word for inner fire, and that's exactly what Tammo meditation results in, an increase in energy and body temperature, particularly at the extremities like the fingers, toes, and head. Benson found that the monks' bodies' temperatures rose as much as 17 degrees Celsius, and their metabolism decreased as much as 64%. These findings were just the beginning. In temple rooms no warmer than 5 degrees Celsius, monks deep in meditation were wrapped in soaking wet sheets dipped in freezing water. For most, this state of frigidity would induce uncontrollable shivering and possibly even onset hypothermia. But within minutes, the miraculous occurred. Steam began rising from the wet sheets. Within an hour, the sheets were dry. In 1985, Benson witnessed the most superhuman feat yet. One February, on the night of the winter full moon, a group of monks clothed only in wool and cotton wraps set out to a rocky ledge some 15,000 feet high in the Himalayas for a traditional sleep out. Benson documented the excursion. In negative 17 degrees Celsius, the monks were able to fall asleep easily without huddling together, and in the morning, they returned to the monastery unharmed. This can only be explained by the enhanced state of control over the mind and body. As Benson once said, Buddhists feel the reality we live in is not the ultimate one. There is another reality we can tap into that's unaffected by our emotions, by our everyday world. His decades of research led him to believe that meditation can help the mind control physical processes once thought to be uncontrollable, things like temperature, metabolism, heart and breath rates, and even brain activity particularly in association with conditions brought on by stress, anxiety, and pain. Benson concluded that this was possible through something he labeled the relaxation response, which he described as a physiological state opposite to stress. Scientifically, it's an autonomic reaction to a meditative state. In simple terms, it's the ability of the body to induce decreased activity of the muscles and organs, and the opposite of your fight or flight response. By entering this enhanced state of relaxation, the body can redirect energy to more targeted purposes. Study after study has shown that the relaxation response can help with everything from depression to high blood pressure, insomnia to infertility, anger management to heart conditions, and so much more. In other words, meditation holds the key to unlocking literal superhuman control over the human body. These powers over mind and body aren't restricted to the Himalayan peaks. 
They are all around you, sometimes famously so. This is Wim Hof. He is a Dutch extreme athlete, best known for being able to withstand cold temperatures that would put most of us in the hospital. The records he set over the years include farthest swim under ice, longest full body contact with ice, and barefoot half marathon on ice and snow. He's even climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, wearing only shorts and shoes, and made it up to 26,000 feet up Mount Everest doing the same. Hoff describes his ability to cope with freezing conditions as a combination of meditation and self-control, a technique he calls the Wim Hof Method. The method includes three pillars, regular cold exposure, breathing exercises, and meditation. Medical studies performed on Wim Hof before, during, and after his amazing feats of cold resistance have demonstrated that his method is akin to the Tamo meditation practiced by the Tibetan monks. By tapping into another level of consciousness, Wim Hof is able to control his body's response to external factors like freezing temperatures, just like the monks Benson observed. He's tapped into his Tamo, his inner fire. He's mastered his flow of Qi energy. Both Tamo meditation and the Wim Hof method rely heavily on breathing technique. This isn't something new. In fact, traditional Eastern practices have championed the concept of breath control for centuries. One such practice is Chinese Qigong, believed to date back at least 4,000 years. The term Qigong translates from Chinese as breath work, energy work, or breath technique. Qigong is the pursuit of breath management in order to achieve and maintain health, stamina, and coordination using the body's network of energy pathways through which qi or vital energy travels. In short, qigong refers to the variety of energy-based healing practices deeply rooted in Taoist and Chinese medical theory and philosophy. Qigong masters describe two key forms of the practice, internal and external. Internal mastery cultivates energy within the body, and external mastery allows for the projection of energy onto others. In both cases, the energy is believed to assist in the promotion and maintenance of good health and healing, and in the manifestation of visualizations and actualization. As the Natural Medicine Journal noted, one of the major benefits of Qigong practice may be the induction of the relaxation response, a term you'll recall from Dr. Benson's work with the monks. Some experts believe that through the relaxation response, the body can selectively enhance drug uptake. In other words, use less of a drug to gain the same results. Qigong then, like Tummo and the Wim Hof method, is an example of mind over body through trained control of qi energy. And this brings us to the intersection of spirituality and science. In 1975, physicist and systems theorist Fritjof Capra published a book that shook the scientific and religious communities to their cores. It was called The Tao of Physics, and in it, Capra outlined that even the most advanced science, particularly in the realm of quantum physics, there exist dramatic overlaps of how the major Eastern faiths like Buddhism, Hinduism, and Taoism describe the natural world and its order. Perhaps the greatest of these overlaps is the ancient Eastern concept of the oneness of all things, that mind and matter, or spirit and matter, are one and the same because everything is interconnected by the flow of energy. Physics has come to demonstrate this same concept of unity within the structure of the universe itself. Atomic physics has shown that matter can manifest itself either as particles or waves, but sometimes we can see them as one and the same. Take light for example. As matter, it exists in the form of photons or light particles, but light particles in motion are observed as electromagnetic fields, waves. This duality is akin to the Eastern concepts of yin and yang two differing aspects of a broader, unified whole. More simply, we can't define matter independently of how we observe it. Therefore, if we change the way we observe matter, the matter itself will change. Likewise, if we change the way we observe our understanding of ourselves, we ourselves will change. Take another example of Capra's book, Space and Time. When Einstein developed his theory of relativity, Physicists began understanding time and space as linked, that time was not separate from space, but instead relative to it. This was perhaps the most groundbreaking scientific breakthrough of the 20th century, but its foundation is something ancient Eastern mystics presupposed many centuries before. The Buddhist Avatamsaka Sutra 
declares that enlightenment is an understanding of the interpretation of time and space. Japanese philosopher Desetsu Deitero Suzuki wrote that when the human mind finds enlightenment, there is no space without time, no time without space. Capra also focused on the concept of dynamism. In Eastern religions and many global Aboriginal belief systems, the natural order is constantly changing and in some ways oscillating in function, it can regenerate itself. Quantum physics shows us that subatomic particles are in constant motion to the point that the universe itself is ever expanding. Physics also teaches us that matter and energy can be interchangeable. Burn a tree and its matter produces energy in the form of heat, while also creating more matter in the form of carbon dioxide. In this way, science supports the ancient mystic notions that energy regenerates and changes. One of the more interesting points of overlap is the concept of the space between, or the empty space between particles. Modern physics says that empty space actually informs how matter can move and change, that it's all connected through energy fields. Eastern concepts say the same. Hinduism and Buddhism teach that the reality of all natural phenomena occurs in the formless void. Taoism teaches that the essence of the universe is empty, and in that void, these ancient beliefs suggest that potential and creativity are born. In both physics and ancient Eastern modes of thought then, we find a singularity of all energy, an ever-changing form of all matter. This is the secret of true self-actualization. Physicists like Switzerland's Nassim Haramein continue to work toward the elusive theory of everything, a mathematical framework for how all aspects of the universe function and interact. As we've unraveled, the interplay between ancient philosophy and scientific understanding may prove to be fertile ground for this quest. Chiefly, perhaps the ancient notion that everything truly is connected holds some powerful answers. As Harriman points out, humanity makes endless categorical distinctions and divisions when it comes to physics, biology, and chemistry. But nature and the universe make no such distinctions. The operating principles of these fields of study are all applied at the same time, regardless of how we separate the concepts for our own simplification. Harry Mean's work, among others, suggests that existence and consciousness form a forward feedback loop. Put simply, he believes that life forms are actually bio-oscillating antennas, that we are literally tapped into the universe's energy field, constantly transmitting and receiving information through energy shaping reality, and being equally shaped by it in turn, and that energy can be rerouted, reused, and focused with purpose. Using this framework, it becomes easier to understand how Buddhist monks can control their body temperature or metabolism, how Wim Hof can withstand bone-chilling conditions. More than this, Haramin's ideas align with Capra's concept of empty space, the so-called void. Haramin reminds us that particles are not just floating in a vacuum of space. They are constantly interacting and reconstituting within various energy fields. The same occurs within the human body. Biology tells us that roughly every three years, every cell in your body is replaced. That means that you're a brand new form of yourself every three years. New cells replicate the old cells based on biological memory. So if you can tap into the energy fields influencing your biology, and gain power over the body through the mind. Haramin argues that it's possible for you to override that process, programming your body to reconstitute itself as you wish. Imagine consciously reprogramming yourself with intention. He believes this is the future of biophysics and that it holds limitless potential for self-healing. In the Tao of Physics, Fritjof Capra placed an emphasis of differing energies, yin and yang, the balance between polarities is one of the connecting points he describes between the laws of physics and the principles of Eastern philosophy. What else comes to mind when the word polarity comes up? Are you thinking magnets? Good guess. Negative and positive charges define the makeup of particles and matter throughout the universe. Electromagnetism affects almost every aspect of our lives, from ways our cells interact, to keeping the takeout menu stuck on the fridge, to the waves that allow our smartphones to be, well, Smart. Magnetism is also at the core of the most advanced physics experiments and nuclear research taking place right now at places like CERN in Switzerland. In terms of electromagnetism, however, 
No other device comes close to the tokamak, a type of thermonuclear fusion reactor that uses a magnetic field to trap hot plasma in the shape of a torus, a donut-shaped container which scientists refer to a toroid. Originally conceived in the 1950s by Soviet scientists, the goal of toroid machines is to combine atomic nuclei in order to produce energy. If that sounds complicated, it's because it is. It's advanced physics, after all. But in simple terms, the goal of the tokamak is to create a reactionless drive that can create perfectly efficient, unlimited energy. There are many tokamak devices in operation around the world, most notably the Joint European Taurus in the United Kingdom. And the hope is that someday soon, power plants can be constructed using this technology in order to power our cities and homes without the dangers of traditional nuclear facilities. The geometric toroid shape is key to allowing these machines to function, creating a sort of feedback loop of energy within the circular device. Scientists consider it the perfect shape for this purpose in many ways. They've inadvertently proven Fridtjof Capra's understanding of the overlap between spirituality and science, the overarching concept of unity within the structure of all things. You see, the torrid shape, or more simply, the donut shape, is one that transcends nuclear fusion. The universe itself seems to have a toroidal shape. In fact, the mathematical formula for calculating the volume of a torus is the same as that used to calculate the volume of the observable universe, what physicists call the hypersphere. But you don't have to travel to outer space to get a sense of this shape's unique importance. Natural phenomena here on Earth, like tornadoes and cyclones, rely on toroidal energy to move the way that they do. Even the human heart makes use of this shape in the form of its electromagnetic field, which arcs outward from the heart and back in the form of a torus. In fact, the energy fields around almost everything are toroidal in shape, when driven to their maximum acceleration point. Philosophy and mathematics have long seen the torus as associated with the concept of infinity, a feedback loop of energy. Pythagoras himself considered it to be a perfect form mathematically. Ancient Chinese depictions of the universe were drawn as a spherical torus. And perhaps most telling, the word universe itself is rooted in Latin, meaning one turn, which is how energy flows through a toroidal structure, constantly flowing back into itself. Philosopher Arthur M. Young, inventor of the first commercial helicopter, saw the torus as an answer to what he called the philosophical problem of the individual. For him, each individual person is connected to everything within a toroidal universe because consciousness itself is toroidal. The energy we put out bends back in on ourselves, in continuous flow through the shape's center, its donut's hole, repeating and refreshing itself in a feedback loop, and therefore, that energy continuously influences ourselves. So how can you control your own energy? How can you bend it to your will and intention like the Buddhist monks or Wim Hof? How can you manipulate it so that its self-influence is beneficial to your own well-being, healing, and abundance? It starts by going through the vortex of that donut hole, by looking within, by meditation. And as we've discussed in the beginning of this video, cutting-edge devices are now available to help you tap into your inner superpowers through meditative practice. Featuring a toroid design, our Qi coils are the ultimate frequency devices for personal and practitioner meditation. Choose from a wide array of coil options, or take things to the max with our flagship Qi Coil 3 transformation system, which comes complete with our two coil devices, a Yin Coil and a Yang Coil, with their crystalline Oregon toroidal base and gold copper wiring. The Qi Coil 3 transformation system is the ultimate shortcut to deep, profound meditation so you can manifest the things you want, easily. Great new features like our safety plug design and mobile power kit make the Qi Coil 3 more portable and durable than anything else on the market. The Qi Coil 3 is enhanced by its all-new quantanium crystal chamber, comprising of three specially treated internal crystals, taking advantage of the natural conductive properties that only crystals possess. The unique shape and design of our Qi Coil systems directs electromagnetic frequencies to create an energy feedback loop. This use of frequency clears negative energy so you can tap into the inner peace and clarity needed to unleash the natural superpowers we've discussed in this video. The benefits are yours for the taking. Boost your stamina, feel more refreshed and confident, promote healthier sleep patterns, increase your motivation, attract abundance, become more focused and productive, improve your mood instantly, and most importantly, 
With the power of resonant frequency, you'll be able to train the flow of qi energy within your body to enhance your meditative superpowers. You won't be alone on this journey. You'll have our qi coil energy meditation course included with every qi coil device. Also in our transformation course that's in the transformation system, there are five levels of instructive training to make the process of qigong mastery intuitive and exciting. Learn ancient meditation techniques, boost your resilience and inner strength, attract positive energy, find calmness naturally, and activate your inner qi energy. Our qi coil systems take inspiration from today's most advanced science and history's longest standing philosophies to help you connect with your deepest spiritual self. Raise your spiritual vibration with this powerful technology. The super version of you is already within you. Let it out with the physics of spirituality. Take control of your inner fire. Reunite with your own superpowers. Transform yourself 1% a day. You're only a frequency away. To learn more, go to chicoilwebinar.com.